Hey Starborn, Jonathan here at Night Knowledge. What you're watching is real Starfield gameplay of me fighting anything and everything on normal difficulty in New Game Plus. I'm playing with both my highest level character and favorite build. In today's video, I'm going to go through the skills I picked and give you an analysis of them so you know what you should look out for if you want something similar, which is basically a space ace. If you want more builds, take a look through my Starfield playlist for videos that goes over three other builds along with the skill analysis. So Numer is in New Game Plus and has decided to become a Dread Pirate. Literally nothing poses issues for him. He'll visit Jemison, Mars, Aquila, or those named special starships and blow them out of the water, making space combat a breeze. Uh, let's take a look at the, the tree that makes this whole thing fit together. So the very first thing, as you can see, uh, in, in my opinion, the most important skills is right here. Piloting, targeting control systems, starship design, primarily. Uh, everything else is just gravy or personal preference. So once again, as you've seen probably from my other videos, piloting is important because it gives you the ability to use thrusters, Imp improves your turning rate and man maneuverability, but more importantly, unlocks the ability to pilot class B and C ships. So if you encounter any ship in the wild, essentially, unless it's a special story ship, uh, you should be able to take out the crew or and or steal the ship from them. And uh, then and then you have a whole new ship. But personally, one of the best things about Starfield is the ability to customize and create your own ship. Uh, let's take a quick look at my ship just, just so we can take a look. It is an absolutely ugly ship. But I'll actually show you at the end of this video uh, the, the way I designed my ship. And then I'm going to show you the turret that makes all, all combat just trivial. So back to the skills. We talked about piloting, the one of the most important things, and thankfully it is in the very first row of tech. So maybe um, after, like under level 10, you can have max style piloting already. Uh, the other thing that I think is really important is targeting control systems. This is for, I would say, early game. And then once you get to mid and even late game, then target control kind of becomes a little bit redundant because you'll have some very powerful weapons and you may not need this anymore. But targeting control system turns on a uh, kind of like a slow motion um, uh, zoomed in attack mode and it allows you to um, target specific systems to say maybe disable shields, disable engines so you can board them. It also increases the damage uh, to those targeted systems. Then the thing I'd recommend taking in, in the tier three skills is starship design. Starship design basically uh, allows you to add to your ship more advanced systems. And some of the best systems or weapons in the game has starship design as a requirement. Usually it's one, two, or four. I don't know if I've seen too many rank three uh, starship design but you want to just basically max it out and basically this will allow you to have the most advanced ship out there coupled with uh, the piloting skill so you could have no piloting so you only do class a ships meaning class a reactors and class a modules but then you could have starship design so you have cutting edge low grade uh, gear in a way so it, it's, it's kind of like a misnomer Let's take a look at the rest of the skills I've picked. I've picked Ballistic Weapon Systems because at the beginning of the game, I used, uh, what was it called? I used Particle Beam Weapons because Particle Beams has uh, the best range in the game besides missiles. Missiles requiring lock-ons and you can't seem to get lock-ons from very far away uh, until you're actually closer. So uh, I, like, I always liked using Particle Beams uh, at the time of this video and uh, this will uh, be able to snipe at chips from far and by time they get close then I will go usually use my target and control system and then target the enemy with the ballistic weapons uh, which as you can see when it's maxed out it does 50% more damage to individual systems so that's really good and it also recharges 30% faster which is great okay so I do have security uh, we've talked about that in previous videos um, I at first, this character was not supposed to get security because uh, I feel like in 
95% of situations, um, lock picking containers or doors really doesn't give you that much benefit or loot or there's, there's not a good reason usually in my opinion to do that yes you can unlock uh contraband containers which gets you more money but you know this character actually as as well uh the way i played it is i own uh, at the beginning of the game i looted things almost everything to get some money so i can afford specific guns but at but after like maybe level 10 i stopped picking up every single thing I came across. I only picked up uh, rare uh, weapons and gear and obviously, you know, med kits and that kind of stuff. But I, I, I didn't pick up any common weapons or armor after that point. And I still had hundreds of thousands of credits. And um, it only made, um, you know, making a custom ship a little bit uh, more challenging because I just couldn't buy anything in the early stages but once i hit level 20 and 30 i had all the money in the world i didn't have to worry about that so once again the reason why i got security was because i thought that maybe i can get some really cool ships i can steal some really good ships and i don't and while you can use security to lock pick into some ships that like touch down on random planets i usually don't find it's worth it so uh, because, you know, everyone just gets the Razor Leaf, you've probably seen the video, you get the Razor Leaf and that gives you that special uh, bonus where sometimes when you encounter pirates, uh, they might run away. That's if you're not being a pirate, but I'm a dread pirate. And, uh, and let me just quickly show you that. What do you mean by a dread pirate? Let's just zoom out a little bit and let's point to Cheyenne. If we point to Cheyenne, you could take a look at my bounty here in this game. I have 1,700,000 bounty. If they ever capture me, I'm going to be in jail forever. And then for the United Colonies, I have 1.8 million bounty. And uh, you, you're probably seeing from any of the footage that I'm just sitting in these systems. Reinforcements keeps coming and I'm just blowing them out of the sky before. Usually I can target them. Okay, so back to skills. So we talked about ballistics, we talked about security. Uh, I put a point into payloads. If you have a floating base, which what a space ace would probably have, this might be good. So you can just store all of your all of your resources into the payload, into your cargo space, and then you know just 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 keep it like uh, keep everything in there. So this could be good, but I. But if you played the way that I played, which was only picking up upgrades to gear, then you actually don't need to really have a large cargo hold. I had about, I think, 1600, and that was enough for the entire game. Um, then some other systems I, or other skills I picked was shield systems to increase the shield capacity. So that's always important so that you don't take physical damage. And then because I'm killing things so far away with my, with my weapons that I don't actually get damaged that much so as you can see i'm only rank uh i'm rank three but this this has taken me uh, like up to new game plus level 100 lots of space combat and the I, at this point basically i don't take i don't take damage anymore so we talked about this before we maxed out beam particle beam weapons because personally in my opinion i think this is the best type of weapon in the game i am as you can see here i am putting some extra points into or i have into the missile weapon systems just because i wanted to see uh what a missile weapon system will look like in new game plus two so um my, my ship will only have missiles because missiles do technically do the the highest damage to both shields and armor um the only problem is is that it takes a long time for missile with weapon systems to reload so they're more like a backup weapon but i want to make uh, the, a missile weapon to be the primary weapon okay so that's particle beam weapons and finally uh, i put points into automated weapon systems because what makes uh, my ship so good uh and and basically space combat trivial is having automated turrets so basically by putting points in it it makes them do more damage and when you go into targeting mode it costs less but if you have the right turrets you will almost never get into targeting mode because your turrets have already done all the work 
So maybe three points in this. Uh, the fourth, the fourth rank. Let's see. It decreases uh, the recharge rate, which is actually very important, so that they shoot more often and do more damage when you're in the uh, targeting mode. So that's what makes a space ace. Really, it's the piloting is the starship design and personally uh, early game targeting control system makes uh, the game much easier because uh, one of the things is it slows down uh, time um, and then uh, sorry over here in terms of weaponry I personally as I said like par particle beam weapons for the range we're talking about 3000 range versus maybe a thousand or 1250 for uh, ballistic or laser weapons um, and missile weapons are is only good i feel as a secondary weapon I, I will try to see if i can show you guys some footage in the future of a pure missile boat and see how well that works uh let's take a look at the other skills that i picked for this character starting with uh combat uh so ship combat is significantly more challenging at least at the early game and as the game goes on uh for for starfield uh while ground combat has always been significantly easier even at the hardest difficulty uh this character went with shotguns uh because it does a lot of damage and then particle beams because the uh as you can see my character here has the weapon equipped i have a big bang which which is a beam, particle beam shotgun that does uh, physical damage and energy damage and holy crap look at that energy damage i've been trying to find a rare version of this gun that has instigator let me see do i have any extra yeah i have an instigator right here so this is a particle beam pistol and it does double damage on the f uh, if if it's the first thing damaging your your target so imagine an instigating big bang that is uh fully maxed out like i have right here we'd be doing two thousand 2000 plus damage per shot and it uses heavy fuse which is not too too rare of a ammo but uh i i the reason why i have only a less than 400 rounds at this point is because i've been grinding some levels to get to 100. so as you can see here big bang particle beam shotgun could be one of the most powerful weapons in the game i feel um it just the only problem is it does leave this kind of like uh aoe ball on the ground which can damage your uh, followers and uh i ha i have seen my followers actually turn on me and and become hostile because they sat in it or was too close to the blast and they got damaged by this aoe that the, the big bang or particle beams tend to leave so if you have followers particle beams aren't the best weapons in in, in my opinion okay so let's go back to skills that's particle beams and we do that to increase the damage essentially so 30 percent more damage so shotguns doing 30 percent more damage as well uh, I took so I'm, I've started putting points in demolition so in new game plus plus you know uh, I'll get to see whether grenades are more viable but right now they're not I put a point in rifle certification because there is a particle beam rifle which does good damage as well but not as much as the big bang <coughs> then I put some points in rapid reloading I put the three points into here three points primarily for this so reload particle beam weapons which is my shotgun 30 percent faster and 50 percent chance to avoid getting interrupted because that's the one thing about particle beam weapons they tend to take longer to reload than the other weapons in my opinion and then finally just for fun i was putting points into armor penetration because if anything does survive the one or two shots of the particle beam shotgun then the armor penetration helps with those elites okay uh, let's take a look at the next important skill tree to my build which was social and uh, in my run uh, for my dread pirate uh, i actually did the entire ryujin uh, storyline so i got manipulation spoiler sorry and um <clears throat> i did have a follower so i can have sarah so i can unlock achievements because i did get 100 percent in starfield my very first 100 percent game um and uh, at the end of the day, the most important thing was picking up isolation because as of right now, in the current state of the game of Starfield and the way in which the slowness of Bethesda, which I'm very upset at, compared to say Larian and Baldur's Gate 3, 
Bethesda does an extremely slow way of updating, patching their game. And the Starfield, while it's a great game, and I would say my game of the year, it is extremely slow at the updates and is unacceptable for a big company like that. I don't know what you're working on, but you're not working fast enough and, uh, you know, for a game that I love. And uh, you could have people playing all the time, but people probably get upset at the many quality of life things that you're missing and you should check out for a video coming out soon i'm going to do a video on i believe 20 quality of life things that starfield needs 20 things 20 big things so uh and one of them is not eating uh being able to eat while it's useful is not that important you know it's 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 it is is the weakest thing you could have added as a quality of life thing but i digress um followers right now once again, is not that good, I feel. It's like maybe at the highest levels, maybe they provide a little bit of distraction so you can uh, take out enemies. But I think uh, almost every character I've played has taken this skill, Isolation, because it decreases the amount of damage you take and increases the de the damage you do. So and, and that's by just being alone when you're out there. And you know what? The, the followers don't do, do much other than provide a little bit of distraction uh, a little bit of damage, even if you give them good weapons. So isolation for that. <clears throat> um, I took persuasion uh, once again uh, because um, I, I really don't know. I, I should. I always pick persuasion uh, uh, because I think I need it. But at the end of the day, if I'm you're, if you're going to be evil-ish, then you don't need persuasion. You can just bull bull bulldoze your way through the game so if i had to do it again and obviously i had i have to pick a tier one skill i would probably go with commerce even though we talked about not really needing money um this will help you in new game plus because it because what happens in new game plus if you're unaware uh you lose all your money you lose your ship you lose all your uh weapons and armor uh even even your consumables they're all gone all all you start off with is a legendary uh what's it called uh three-piece suit let me see i i don't have it on me yeah i don't have it on me but see how there's the 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 suit the pack and the helmet you you'll start off with this three-piecer so it it it, it it's a one piece and it's it it's it's a, it's in your suit area and you'll have it equipped and it counts as your spacesuit pack and helmet and while it has good stats and it's legendary you'll find better gear down the road so it, it, it's only for the very beginning of the game so um and you'll need money to be able to 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 quickly replace your gear even though you're higher level there are certain areas where enemies will be high level as well so i've I would just pick commerce because it just helps in, in most situations and then that also makes things 20% cheaper to buy and I'm thinking that count, counts for starship upgrades as well. So persuasion, I don't like the minigame um, and I don't think it's useful unless you're trying to be a good person or kind of haha I'm, I'm, I'm I guess um, playing an RPG. Uh, I've been picking up some other social skills, intimidation, diplomacy, and negotiation. Of the three, I feel like negotiation is the best skill because it give, when you do go to persuade people, you can actually just pay money to get a, a, a many points towards the persuasion. Um, and, uh, you know, in Starfield, you're always going to have a lot of money. So bribing people never the most i think i've ever had to bribe someone was six thousand credits that but usually the average is about one to three thousand which is absolutely nothing so negotiation the most important one and once again if you do the ryujin um storyline in found on neon uh near the end you get min a free manipulation skill whether or not you have enough points in social to be able to afford it it gives you one point to put further points i believe you're going to need to obviously complete complete the challenge and have the appropriate points but um i don't feel like manipulation is good either manipulation just adds uh it, it 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 allows you to interact with people and tell them hey uh go unlock this thing that you can unlock but otherwise i feel manipulation is not a very good skill um, interacting with people with uh, manipulation 
instigation, diplomacy, or intimidation, they all suck. They're, 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 they, they, they don't feel good when in, in your hands uh, using your scanner. It just doesn't feel good. So, but manipulation, as I said, when you persuade people, you with 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 persuasion, you'll be able to negotiate to bribe them. But then you'll also have a new option for manipulation, and that's like a free bribery, and 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 it it always works, and it gives you a high amount of points towards persuading the character. So if you have negotiation, one point of negotiation and one point of manipulation, you should be able to bribe or manipulate your way in into any situation. Uh, I started putting points into this for when I had Sarah as a companion leadership. Once again, uh, it, if I was to redo it again, where I don't have any followers, once again, I only had followers so that I can get that specific achievement of having maximum follower affinity. Uh, I would never take leadership because I'd never have followers, so I would not use that. Let's look at the other skills. <laughs> I was trying to put points into weightlifting so I can eventually get to concealment because I wanted a character that could maybe, you know, go into stealth and one shot everything. But, you know, with the, that big bang uh, shotgun, I'm essentially doing that and I don't have to worry about whether I'm concealed or not. So um, one day I'll get to concealment, but as of right now, stealth and, you know, um, sneak attacks really isn't too big of a thing. So uh, that is the physical, social combat trees. The last tree we'll talk about is science. Um, what was important for this character uh, is that obviously space combat was, I'm gonna be very good. I'm never gonna have to worry about space combat. But then when I am on the ground, there will be times I might need to, I'd, I'd like to have a, a decked out weapon. So I picked, so I went for weapon engineering, which I think is one of the most important uh, research skills so you just max it out so you can get every single skill you'll need typically need one one point into special projects so that you can get some of the special uh, the, the highest end weapon uh, upgrades uh, so I put points into research methods which I think is always the most important thing for whatever game you play because wh whatever play style you pick you're most likely going to have to research anything or something and so you might as well put points into this which doubles the chance for sudden development which if you're unfamiliar uh, whenever you uh, fin put point put resources towards the research there's a small chance you get sudden development which adds additional resources of that thing you're putting in or for the rest of your research so this will double that chance don't forget you can wear some uh, science type of clothing which increases it by i believe five percent uh, and then uh, when you max it out it decreases the cost to craft and research by 60 percent so um that is I, I think always very important uh i i didn't take anything else although on even on normal difficulty i found that i always miss taking out on medicine because uh, i don't always go out of my way to buy med kits and then somewhere deeper down uh usually level 40 and later is when I start actually taking more damage and I'm slowly using more med kits unbeknownst to me. And then suddenly one day you're just out of med kits. And you know, have you been storing the trauma kits and emergency packs, the, the more powerful med kits? Usually I don't, usually I sell it because the trauma kits and emergency kits uh, cost, uh, weigh, weigh, um, have weight and I don't like it filling up my inventory. So sometimes I feel taking medicine would be better because it restores more health and it, it does it faster. So that is a, a good option at high difficulties and just for late game because you're taking more damage and so that you don't always have to go around buying med kits. You don't have to pay attention to that. So we talked about weapon engineering. That's very important. Spacesuit design. I'd like the idea, but once again, as a quality of life update, um, Bethesda needs to flesh this out. There needs to be more mods for your spacesuit to give this skill more purpose. This this is really just because I had extra skills, but spacesuit design, it needs to give you more armor. It needs to give you more, just more of everything. Like I would love a rank four or rank three or four ability where it always has your scanner on so that you can see enemies more easily. 
I don't know. Anything. Spacesuit design definitely needs a, uh, an overhaul. One of the best ways in the early game to get experience is to take scanning. And uh, actually, no, it isn't. I this this was for. I don't know why I picked scanning for. Essentially, scanning not. You don't need it. You you absolutely do not need it. I would just put the points into weapon engineering. Don't worry about scanning. What is more important is astrophysics. Or what astrophysics do with rank, get rank two. And what that will allow you to do, that will allow you to scan any planet or moon in a system. And you have a 20% chance to discover a trait. So what, so what I would do is I would take my ship, go to any system, and then... I would find any gas giants. Most systems has a minimum of usually at least one gas giant, but most most of the time there's at least two gas giants, as you can see here, right here. And basically, what you do is you is you would zoom in on it, and then you would scan it. And and a gas giant, all you have to do is survey it. You don't actually you can't touch down. And no matter your skill, you would uh, you would survey it. That that gives you uh, some bonus experience, and it gives you an item in your inventory, which you can sell to vendors for about 500 credits. So it's easy experience, easy money, and with the surveying skill, all you have to do is go to the system and then zoom in and and scan. Whereas if you don't have if you don't have that skill, you manually have to travel to those gas giants and and travel scan, travel scan, and that's if you. Um, have the time. If you have the time, you don't need the skill. But if you want to just do it faster, 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 get more experience, get more money, get the two ranks in scanning and just go to a system. And, and then all you have to do is, is zoom in, uh, scan, and then as you can see here, like that, scan, done. Uh, let's see. I think I've done I've done the scanning for, for all these um, planets already. So, so scanning is is a very good skill to, to pick for experience, but you don't need it. And finally, probably the most important thing that goes with the Starship build is this skill, which as you can see, I've maxed out, uh, and Neutronic Fusion. So what this does is it gives up to five extra units of power so that your super powerful class C ship can equip, uh, not only can you equip the best reactor, you'll still have extra power to power, hopefully, probably your shields or your weapon systems so uh yeah that is that let's jump over and let's go take off so as you can see my turret system's maxed out my uh particle beams is sniping from super far how far away is it is more than uh three thousand um, kilometers away. I'm going to turn around. As you can see, I'm fighting half a dozen ships, barely taking any damage. I should be using my missiles whenever I lock on. That guy. There we go. Things are falling out of the sky. Reinforcements are coming. Here's a lock. Before my missile can probably hit the guy, he's going to die. Oh, there's that missile will hit. I'm not too sure whether enemies can shoot down your own missiles. I I can't tell. There's lots of space debris out there. And maybe Bethesda did not expect people to play like I, I am playing right here. But they, when these reinforcements come, they say the same thing over and over and over. Once again, that's my turrets automatically shooting. I'm having a hard time, uh, you know, settling my ship. Granted, these are low low levels, but the highest level guys are probably found near Serpentis or in the high level systems, which isn't as many as, as we've encountered right here. Oh, my turrets are ready to shoot at that guy. Yeah, see, I don't even have to don't even have to aim. And there you go. The Aquila system is basically done. You know, like there's, there'll be the stragglers that come in. And see, my turrets are already shooting on that. That's not me shooting. A couple seconds. That's like, what, two seconds? Ship is done. 
without without having to do anything. So let's take a look at my ship. Uh, this is my modified Razor Leaf for New Game Plus. Uh, we are not going to win any beauty contests with this ship. It, it wasn't supposed to. It's basically it was supposed to be like a joke ship in that it's super ugly, uh, but it works for what you want, which is I want it to do a lot of damage. And I want it to be very convenient in terms of I want to walk in my ship and find everything very quickly. I don't want there to be multiple levels because uh, until Bethesda adds uh, probably stairs to these ships, I don't want multi-level ships that I have to walk through because going up up and down ladders is extremely slow. And, um, you know, uh, booster pack jumping is what I do 99% of the time. I almost never use the stairs. So uh, let's just take a look at the uh, at the design of my ship. Rally, uh, we have the cockpit and we have the captain's quarters right here. And I have one of the landing bays, a frontal landing bay versus a side and back landing bay because frontal landing bay is just more convenient to get anywhere you need to, to be, whether it's to your quest, to the city. It just saves you on walking time. So I did that. I did a front one and then what I did was I had a, a companion way. So basically, um, when you go in through here, you'll go into this companion way and then right adjacent to it, you, you, you hang a left basically and you'll be in the captain's quarters and then your cockpit. Um, and it's because at this time of the game, um, my character had the maxed out weapon skill. So I just gathered enough resources in my ship and then I went to say Crix, the pirate uh, base and, and I did all my weapon upgrades there because I don't need to do too many weapon upgrades. Uh, that's why that's the only reason why I don't have a workshop on the ship. This ship is basically just to take me to the planet to complete a quest or to 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 go level or uh, to to fight other um, ships. So it's 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 the bare basics. Uh, we have our reactor hiding, I believe, right under... Where is the reactor hiding? Oh, it's, it's right here. Uh, so so over on this side, I have the reactor. I have the grav drive. These, the, these are two-level uh, reactors and two-level um, grav drives. And once again, you need the piloting rank 4 to have class C, the, the highest tier gear. And as you can see here, this grav drive... Uh, requires rank 4 starship design and as does this reactor here it needs not only max piloting it needs max starship design so a lot of it so a lot of my ship uses starship design rank 4 right there even even the engines and as you can see i have some landing gears i just put as many landing gears as i could so that it kind of so it can actually take off without errors i could have obviously put stuff on the side i didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel like it and uh, it's just bristling with weapons. We have fuel at the top, Starship Design Rank 3. We have Starship Design Rank 3 for the cargo hold, giving you 1480. Um, and uh, yeah, that that is really the design of the ship. This, this, this right here is actually a landing gear right here. And this is a nose cap. And I just did it so that it's kind of unique because, you know, most ships that you know you've probably seen are symmetrical you know it it, it looks like it looks like it has wings and mine doesn't mine is kind of like um i don't know is millennium falcon like this you know where it hasn't it has a f like two different sides or pointy things I, I don't know once again this is a joke design ship it's, it's not meant to look pretty it's not meant to make sense it's just uh just just playing around with stuff so instead of having usually the reactor and grav drives in the back, I have it on the sides over here with land with with, with landing gears over here, but 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 they don't but they but it's not symmetrical. So it probably is grating on the nerves for some people, but that is the design of the ship. So let me show you. Uh, this ship has three different weapons. It uh, but is mostly the same. We have um, here's the missiles right here, missile launchers. Um, I think the best ones in the game. Which is the uh, at atlatl atlatl missile launchers 280C. It does need starship design rank three, and as you can see, 500 hull and shield damage, which is incredible for a max power of four. And I believe I have two of these right here and right here. So when you shoot these, it's doing. I think when you shoot them, 
I don't know if it's shooting one missile at a time or two, but either way, 500 damage or technically 1,000 damage altogether, that's that's pretty incredible. Um, and then my standard weapon, just, just when I have to manually shoot, I have the Obliterator 250. It's Starship Design 1, so you can get it rather early. It's uh, Class C, and it shoots at 3,900 range. So you're sniping from super far and doing 100 damage. So that's really good. Now, the most important uh, turret is I found, I think it's based off your level. So after a certain level, you're going to find this turret. I found it in Neon. So let's uh, let's take, take a look at it first. So this is a turret. So I don't need to aim this at all. It As soon as I get into range, the turrets automatically shoot. Rank C, Starship Design 4, and it does 200 damage at 3900 range. So amazing range, amazing damage. Let's see where we find this. So let's see, you find that turret, or I found that turret. You, I don't know if you, whether you can find it at other locations, uh, but I specifically found it in Voli, specifically uh, Neon. So you go to uh, Neon here, you go to the core, so when you actually land on Neon, you're looking for the side with the red, the red end over there, and that's the Ryujin Tower. Uh, I also have a high bounty with the Neon Security, so they don't like me. As you can see, there are bodies. So basically, you're looking for this elevator at the very end. Go away from me. And then we're going to choose basically the Tayo Astroneering uh, location. Hopefully no one will fight me so I can actually show you the vendor. Oh, damn it. Never mind. Well, anyways, that lady down here, let's see, hopefully she won't mind me. You can talk to her, and she's the one that is going to have the, um, she's going to have the turret. So I'm going to go to the ship builder, and basically, I'll move aside, and basically, let's add, and let's go to weapons, and then this will be found all the way at the bottom. It seems like this specific vendor has a lot more weapons than, say, other places. And uh, what you're looking for is this one right here. The Obliterator 250 MEV Alpha Turret. It costs, it costs a lot of money, but once you get it, you're never have to get, to get anything better. You once again will need that Starship Design 4. Uh, 34,000 bucks, basically 35,000. And once again, this is, I think, the best turret in the game. Uh, I might, maybe in a new game, plus uh, triple plus, I might just have a ship that's just pure turret. So I don't even have to do anything. I'm just going to sit there, uh, fly around, and let the turrets do all the work. And uh, uh, as you can see from my ship, let's take a look at my ship. My ship has uh, one, two, three of those turrets, right? Three of those turrets. And uh, as you've seen from all the gameplay, the turret is doing almost all the work. I, I barely have time to shoot a missile. I barely have time to do alpha beam so i could i could just get rid of these missile launchers get rid of my my manual fire alpha beams and just just have a ship just full of turrets and i would be totally fine but uh that is that uh let me just quickly go back Th that's the end of this video here today thanks for joining me this is my space ace build analysis once again the most important skills i found was piloting starship design and maybe automated weapon systems if if that's the way you want to go but really other than that maybe anutronic fusion um weapon engineering um and if you liked the type of guns that i selected shotgun certification particle beams or if you like more ranged you can go for the rifle certification there are those particle beam varun uh pistols which if you want to do pistols instead which can do 50 percent more damage you know um and uh unless Unless you like having having followers, I always like to pick isolation because it just gives you a, a lot of uh, defensive capabilities. So that's my Space Ace build. Uh, thanks for joining me today. Check out the rest of my channel for other videos on Starfield, video games, board games, and other fun things. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.